Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I just wanted to do a quick video talking about some Wii U pickups I had gotten the other day, and a little bit uh, wax poetic a little bit about Devil's Third on the Wii U. So um, I think I had showed this off a while ago, but I don't really recall. I had gotten this in Maine, in Portland, Maine, uh, Star Fox Zero on the Wii U. We were in this really cool little, like, mom and pop type um, video game movie CD store called Blue Moose, I want to say. And um, we're looking through the Wii U games, and the prices are pretty normal. You know, nothing uh, crazy, but pretty average. What's that with my eye? So um, Beth pulls out Star Fox Zero and goes, oh, did you want this one? And I look at it, and I go, yeah, I heard bad things about the controls, but I don't really know much about it. You know, I only played the, uh, I think the 64 version or the Super Nintendo version last. I think it was 64. So um, she goes, oh, okay. And she goes, yeah, but it's only six bucks. I'm like, what? This game is like still between 40 and $60 kind of everywhere. So they priced it wrong for some reason. Um, I thought that when it said like, Five ninety nine or whatever, six dollars. That it um they like messed up and like it just didn't print correctly and maybe a number was missing. But uh, lo and behold, I brought it up to the counter and it was like six dollars and thirty cents or something. So they didn't catch it. I didn't say anything and that's it. I got Star Fox Zero for a really good price. Um, I played it once. It's pretty cool. Um, the controls do take a little bit of getting used to. So, once I get, like, used to them fully, I think I'll have fun with the game. It seems pretty cool. Um, on that note, uh, the game I did not get with that, because this usually comes as a bundle, is Star Fox Guard. And that didn't come with the purchase from Maine. However, this is at GameStop used, and it's usually 5 or $6. Someone on Reddit the other day had mentioned it went down to $2.99. I was like, you know what? I like collecting Wii U games. I have a lot of great games for the system I'm having fun with. Star Fox seems cool. I was contemplating even getting the Amiibo. Um, for $2.99 with the rewards card and crap, you get like 10% off. It's going to be like $2.90 after tax. Let me just get it. So uh, my friend who works at GameStop, he ran out. And their website no longer lists it. I don't know why. I don't know if they're just phasing them out and just trying to get rid of them or what. So I went to a local store, I called them, they said they had one copy, it was mint, it was, I went and picked it up, and for $2.90 I got Star Fox Guard, it's um, it's a tower defense game, you know, you're in like, um, it sort of reminds me of the old Sega CD games, which I love of course, where you're controlling the cameras and you have to go to each one of them and shoot things as they come at the camera, and if the camera takes too much damage or they make it to the base, you lose, it's like Ground Zero Texas kind of but not full motion video, of course. So uh, it's a pretty cute little game. Um, I think the demo was on Star Fox or something, or you could download the demo, and then this is the full game. So for two bucks, it's it's a great catch. Um, and finally, I picked this up because I was, I was hesitant. I wanted to get it. I was watching reviews. The reviews looked really good. The game looked really fun. I've been getting into these kinds of games lately, which is platformers, and that is Shantae Half Genie Hero. Um, this is the Risky Beats edition. Edition. I have the cardboard sleeve over there, and in it comes the soundtrack. I, I don't think I'll open that, because most games don't have music I'd listen to outside of the game. I know some people strip, you know, play it in their car, or their flash drives, or their iPods, or whatever. I've never really been one, besides Silent Hill, um, to play it in my car, or anything. But anyway, I picked this up. This is like $30 everywhere. I was hoping it would drop to $20 around when it came out. It didn't. Um, I say that because Steam World, the Steam World collection did drop to $20 like a couple weeks after it came out. So it came out at $30. Amazon has the Prime um, deals or whatever. So I got it for $24. They gave me a $10 credit for a past thing I did where I had a problem. So I got it for $14. And then I had like points on my rewards card or something for $14. Bucks. So in the end, I spent $14 on this, and I thought it was a pretty good deal, and I hear it's great. I haven't played it yet. Um, I'm hoping it's not too difficult, because I think it's something Beth and I would enjoy playing, you know, switching off, handing the controller back and forth, but uh, supposedly it's a really fun game. The other one on my radar is Runbo Deluxe, um, and the Zelda Wind Waker, no, not Wind Waker, Twilight Princess uh, with the Amiibo. That's sort of on my radar if I ever come across them at a good price. 
So now that I'm done with my pickups, that might be where your interest uh, veers off. Um, I wanted to talk a minute about Devil's Third. So Devil's Third is a third-person shooter um, that just went offline in terms of the multiplayer. I played the multiplayer once with my friend Chris, and it was pretty fun. It's it's sort of a generic shooter online, um, but you can get like um, levels and and these golden eggs and like upgrade your your character and your weapons and stuff. So it had like a a little bit of a um, you know, an upgrade system to it, which I thought was fun. We played online with a couple guys. One dude's name was like, I want to say it was something Ninja Panda, Ninja something. And he just, he was like the highest level and was just like massacring people with swords. So he, he wasn't very fun to play with, but um, overall I had a good time, which is funny because on the back it does say massive based, massive clan based online multiplayer. Join a clan, build a base and attack your rivals in multiplayer. There's no multiplayer anymore, and they, they talk about it on the back of the box. Um, the multiplayer wasn't bad. I, I probably would have went back to it. It was pretty fun. But I just beat the single-player story mode today, um, and I just wanted to talk about this because everyone really beats this up. Is it a bad game? No. Is it generic? Yes. The gameplay is generic. The camera could be a little wonky. Um, some of the bosses can be kind of frustrating in terms of like one hit kills or doing certain things to take you down really fast, but overall, it's a pretty fun game. It held my interest. It's a third person shooter that kind of a very little bit reminds me of that, like sort of weirdness army of two has, uh, which I love the first two games, the second game, especially the third one. Yeah. Um, it's only single player, sadly devil's third, but especially now, because they took the multiplayer offline. But, um, you know, it kept my interest enough. It's like some stupid story about you're this, like, terrorist, uh, you're a Russian guy, you know, Russian accent, all that, but you were adopted by a Japanese guy who trained you to be some kind of, like, lunatic killer, and now the government in America is using you to counterattack these people. Um, so you're Russian, you look Russian, you sound Russian, but you're covered in kanji tattoos, then you could like power up and your tattoos glow and you get stronger and stuff. Um, there is no like upgrade system. You can find trophies, which are like kind of mini achievements in the game. And online, you would have been able to turn those trophies into, I guess, points or golden eggs to upgrade your character, but that no longer exists. So anyway, the game's pretty fun. It lasted me, I don't know. People say it's 10 to 12 hours. I would say more like six, seven, maybe. Some of the levels are kind of long, but it's pretty generic, you know, it's just a gory third person shooter. Um, some of the stuff was funny and kind of interesting and cool. The story I found to be really boring. Um, but is it a bad game by any means? No, I just say it's very middle ground, run of the mill type of thing. Um, overall, I enjoyed it, you know, for what it was, I knew what it was and I went in with really low expectations and I was pleased. That's fine. Uh, is it worth like the 50, $60 price tag? No. But uh, I had a ton of credit at GameStop, and I ended up a while ago doing like a buy two, get one, or some kind of crap, and I got like a bunch of free shit. So it didn't bother me um, when I purchased my Wii U. I just wanted to pick it up and try it. But it's one of the only games of its type on the Wii U, so you don't have much of an option if you do want to play a shooter like that. But uh, pretty cool stuff. So just wanted to talk about Devil's Start a little bit. Um, I did enjoy the, the goofy cheese it has going. Sort of reminds me a tiny bit of like... Um, Metal Gear Solid, like that kind of weird, drawn-out story with, like, lots of strange characters. But, um, so those were my Wii U pickups and my rambling about Devil's Third. Hope everyone is doing well. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.